Hello friends, welcome to Diatomy. Welcome to the discussion on June 2021 current affairs and in this lecture we will discuss agriculture, geography, environment and biodiversity and this is part 1. So these are short videos which you can use to revise the current affairs as well as go through them. The document that we are using for the discussion is the monthly current affairs document that is provided to you. Okay. So whenever you are free, just go through these videos once. Okay, this will give you a brief idea about the current affairs, all the issues that are going on and what are, what are the things that we have to retain, right? So the content for this discussion is, first we will look at the Brickland Initiative, why it was in use, what is it all about. Next we will talk about coal deposits, after that we will see what is the normal monsoon, why it was in use. We will talk about black carbon levels, spike at the Himalayan glacier. We will talk about groundwater production, the Hang Patkai National Park, the Pakhet Tiger Reserve. So all of these things we will talk about. The first thing that we have is the Bricklane Initiative. So as we all know, because of the rising pollution in, in the capital region of Delhi, what happened is the NGT has ordered for a ban of the coal-fired bricklins in the national capital region beyond June. So because of this, what is going to happen is that the bricklins which are being fired using coal, they are banned. So now you'll get a doubt what is bricklin. So bricklin basically is the place where the bricks are stacked and they are burned. Because initially the bricks are made up of mud and after that they are stacked and they are burned using coal. You can see in this picture they are burned using coal because what happens is during this process of burning the bricks will get hardened. Okay, So this, this is the process that will happen. So during this process what is happening is that the coal which is used to burn, you know it is not burned completely. Because of this incomplete combustion, you know there is something called soot that is released. And you can see here, this is the smoke that is being released. And this is one of the largest emitter, or you can say this is one of the largest polluter after CO2. The soot is the second largest global warming contributor after carbon dioxide. Okay, and its effect we can see in health and also even in the Himalayan glaciers and the snow. We are seeing all of this effect because, because of this soot, we will see even in this lecture also, because of this soot, how the glaciers are melting. And according to the NASA study, the South Asia has highest soot emissions in the world and most of it is emitted by the 150,000 plus bricklins which are there in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan and Nepal. Okay. So as I told, it is the second biggest global warming emitter. So in all this, uh, what happened is, the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development, ICIM Modi, remember this, it has started a bricklin initiative. So under this, what they have done is, they have uh, done a lot of research and they have redesigned the bricks and they stacked in a different position generally this is how the bricks are stacked now they have come up with a unique zigzag pattern where the bricks can be stacked and in this zigzag pattern what they try to do is they try to improve the efficiency efficiency of the coal okay this is what they try to improve and because of this what will happen is that they will use less coal so the emissions will be less less emissions will be happening okay so this is what is that we have to know now let's move on to the next topic which is the coal deposits in northeast so recently what happened is five miners were trapped in the megalaya coal mine so we know there is this mining called rat hole mining in this rat hole mining what will happen is that let's say this is the uh, let's say in the land in this, this is the mine in this mine they will put a small hole and people will go through this small hole and they will bring back coal okay this is called rat hole mining so as the name suggests like rats they will they will keep hole and they will crawl into the land and they will bring back the mine bring back these mines it is very dangerous method and even the ngt has banned it in 2014 but even still illegally lot of illegally lot of uh, people even practice it today and because of this what has happened is that recently five miners got trapped in this megalaya coal mine right so now we'll now this gives us the opportunity to discuss about coal coal if you see it's a sedimentary rock you know there is there are various kinds of rocks the bituminous rock the the you know sorry not bitterness so the igneous rock the sedimentary rock we have all of these things so the coal is basically a sedimentary rock which is predominantly made of carbon and it is formed over millions of years through the geological process which is applied on plant remains buried under the soil okay so sorry yeah <coughs> under the soil so coal if you see there are four types of coal anthracite anthracite the bituminous the ligonite and peat so this is the order this is the decreasing order of coal quality anthracite coal is the highest coal quality which has about 80 to 95 percent of carbon 
80 to 95 percent of carbon and in india it is found in small quantities only in jammu and kashmir so we have uh, or you can say the good quality coal is not found in india and that is why we import lot of this coal from countries like australia this high quality coal and bitternite lignite and peat they can be found in india they can be found in india and if you see the state with the highest coal reserves it is jharkhand it is jharkhand which is has the highest coal reserves after jharkhand the next highest coal producing state is odisha and after that it is chatisgarh in jharkhand the jharia coal field is one of the oldest and richest coal field okay just remember this this is enough and also you have the bokaro coal fields in jharkhand okay both remember the jharia and bokaro coal fields and after that you have odisha and then chatisgarh so this is the ranking with regard to the coal right now let's move on to the next topic which is normal monsoon and this was in news so recently imd announced it expects southwest monsoon seasonal rainfall is likely to be normal which is 96 to 104% of the long term period average now you will be getting doubt every year the imd indian meteorological department it will be announcing this before the monsoon we have two kinds of monsoon the southwest monsoon and the northeast monsoon these are the two monsoon that are there in india and the southwest monsoon it starts generally from june till you can say september october it will be there september october season and after that uh, you have the northeast monsoon it will be starting from november and in november december we will be having this northeast monsoon okay the southwest monsoon in impact will be there all over india but if you see the northeast monsoon it impact you can say almost uh, is limited to the eastern part of india right so this is the thing that we need to know now you will get a doubt what is normal rainfall what is average rainfall what is above average rainfall you're getting all of these doubts now we will clear those things so every year the imd will announce whether the rainfall will be normal that means what kind of rainfall we are going to have so how how the imd is defining this so what they have done is from 1961 to 2000 they have taken average from june to september what is the rainfall that india is getting they have taken the 40 year average and it came out to be 88 centimeters this is called the long term period average so long term period average is 88 centimeters so now if the rainfall that is expected if it is between 96 to 104% it is called normal rainfall that means it will be around 88 centimeters only the, the average rainfall will be after that if you see if there is any deviation if the deviation is uh, you can say more than 10% that means it will be if it is above 104% to above 110% it is called above normal and if it is above 110% of the long term period average it is excess rainfall if it is below if it is from 90 to 96% it is below normal and if it is below 90% it is called rainfall deficient year okay so this is the classification that imd has brought in so we need to know this classification because tomorrow there might be a direct question on this right now let's move on to the next topic which is the, the uh, news that was there is the black carbon level spike was seen at the himalayan glaciers so black carbon if you see it is produced by human activity the black carbon basically is produced by human activity we have seen during the firing of uh, bricklins the soot will get released okay the soot is nothing but it is a form of black carbon and if it deposits on the ice what will happen is the ice melting rate increases the melting rate increases because of this black carbon because whenever the black carbon get deposited on the ice what will happen is the temperature gradually increases the temperature gradually increases and because of this because as you know black is absorber of heat so when the black gets deposited then when the black carbon gets deposited on this ice the ice start melting because of the increase in temperature slowly right so if you see the, uh, the source of this black carbon 51 percent of the black carbon comes from household energy after that 26 percent from transport 8% from agriculture and 5% from industrial production this is the, these are the various sources and uh, the black carbon results from the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels as we have discussed the complete combustion would turn the entire carbon into co2 but if this does not happen okay if this entire combustion does not happen there will be other byproducts like the carbon monoxide the volatile organic compounds and organic carbon and black carbon particles all these things are formed and this black carbon is nothing but soot and these fine particles as they are black they absorb a lot of heat and when they get deposited on the ice the ice melting rate increases right so now let's move on to the next topic which is about the groundnut production so groundnut production if you see it was in use why it was in use because 
the groundnuts uh, india has produced about 16.6% of the total groundnut production in the world 16.6% means it's not a small amount it's not it's a huge amount you can say the groundnuts so the cr- groundnut crop we need to what we need to know is from the examination point of view groundnut where it is produced which state has highest production and what are the conditions for the groundnut production the groundnut is produced both as in kharif and rabi seasons it is largely a rain fed kharif crop of drylands but in southern india it is cultivated during the rabi season the kharif season has a share of more than 75% of total production it covers 3.6% of the total crop area and the states or the largest the largest groundnut producing state one is gujarat after that rajasthan after that tamil nadu so remember these top 3 that is enough for the exam gujarat rajasthan tamil nadu now the temperature that is required is so around 30 degrees is what it is required above 35 degrees will inhibit its growth and below 15 degrees will also inhibit its growth so the optimal daily mean temperature is around 30 degrees for its growth and warm and moist conditions are favorable than cool and wet climate so warm and moist is important and if you see this groundnut it is produced as i said both in kharif and rabi in south india especially in rabi season it is grown it is grown okay so in states like tamil nadu the groundnuts they are actually uh, the groundnuts they even uh, the fields which are producing groundnut they are irrigated so because of this what happens is the rate of production or the output is much higher in tamil states like tamil nadu compared to that of neighboring states like andhra pradesh telangana and okay right this is what we need to know so next one is about the dihang patkai national park it is the assam seventh national park it is assam seventh national park so if you see the dihang patkai national park it is the it it was announced recently the dihang patkai national park and assam has now assam now has the third most national parks after tamil after madhya pradesh and andaman nicobar islands madhya pradesh has 12 national parks and andaman has nine national parks now in assam if you see the raimona national park is one manas national park orang national park nameri kazanga dihang patkai and dibru sikawa these are the national parks that we have in assam okay so these are the national parks that we have in assam and among all these the national parks in assam especially we have two important unesco world heritage sites which are manas and kaziranga these are unesco world heritage sites and dihang patkai if you see it is a it is a major elephant reserve it is a major elephant reserve right so next is about the pakke tiger reserve it was in news because there was some protests that were going on in uh, this pakke tiger reserve and it was in news so the the, the the protests which were going on is basically with regarding to an indefinite strike by the workers with regard to the non payment of wages that is not important from the exam what is important is the location of pakke tiger reserve and uh, it's important it's important uh, i would say what are the important flora and fauna which are there all of these things is what we need to know so pakke tiger reserve the location it is located in arunachal pradesh east kamen district the pakke wildlife sanctuary and pakke reserve falls fall under this and this landscape has a very high diversity and endemicity as it forms a transition zone between the india and malay eco eco regions as you know we have biodiversity hotspots biodiversity hotspots and the indo indo myanmar region indo burma region it is one of the biodiversity hotspot in the northeast we have other biodiversity spots for that is western ghats and also uh, even in south of india between india and sri lanka even that is another biodiversity hotspot so this is what we need to know and important fauna in this uh, pakke tiger reserve you see barking deer hawk deer hornbill right so these are the things that we need to know and uh, yeah this is the location of this uh, tiger reserve so here you have the pakke tiger reserve almost you can say it is there in the border of uh, arunachal pradesh and assam right so you have the kamlang and namdafa even these are the uh, wildlife sanctuaries which are there in uh, arunachal pradesh right we have sundarbans here simplipal in odisha okay valmiki in bihar the baksa tiger reserve in uh, in west bengal the manas in arunachal pradesh sorry manas in uh, assam kazranga orang so all of these things we need to identify right so so that's it guys uh, i'll see you again in the next lecture next we will start with the part 2 right till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind